Hey everybody, it's Audrey Berm again from Audrey Lynn Studios on the west side of Canada in Alder Grove, close to Vancouver. Um, I have another kiln opening and I have some new combinations that I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, and this time I fired to just a straight cone six. For those of you who've been watching my kiln openings, I wasn't getting enough drips with the slow cool program and then I went cone six with um was it a 15 minute hold I think or a 10 minute hold and that was too far and anyway whatever I, I got closer to a seven anyway this one I thought do a straight cone six put my witness cones in and see where it's sitting um and I haven't had a look yet so right now the kiln my scut 10 18 with a three inch brick is at 76 degrees. So I just want to mention that to all of you that um, said that they wanted to see the watercolor on pottery vid and the, um, oh, I put out a short for a, like a, a slab seaside plate. Okay, they're coming. It just takes a little while to film. All you, all you YouTube creators know what it's like to, to film, you know, you do a little bit of filming and then you file it away until you can get back to it or um, until you can do it again. Nobody's in the house or, you know, or you wait till it's fired because you want to show the result on the end. You know how it goes. So they are coming. <laughs> and also, thank you to everyone who responded to my community post. I asked whether or not you all would like edited videos or live uh, streams best like real-time or edited videos and you know what a hundred percent said edited so I was worrying oh no I'm like the only one here who's never you know doing a live and of course I would need to get to a thousand subscribers to be able to do it which I'm almost there you know whatever but um, am I worrying about being someone who doesn't do a live so I thought I'd ask and he answered. So, you know, I think I would like to do a live once in a while, but truthfully, I like presenting an edited product too. It makes me feel better. Anyway, thank you very much for answering my questions. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> okay, like I said, I haven't had a look yet uh, into Draco, but... Let's open them up. All right, so on this top shelf, I have, I made these um, pressed plates with uh, the pottery forms. This one is 370 clay, and um, it was the oval one, but then I made more of an organic edge on it with, um, and I used a roller. But on this one, I used Coyote's Halo, Purple Halo, and it just covered up the texture. So I absolutely love this glaze. Nobody uses it. I love it. Um, but in this case, it did cover up the texture. And I have to tell you that when you're using this glaze, let's see if I, oh, here we are. When you're using this glaze, it um, it's one of those ones that goes on chalky. And uh, so it's not so, so pleasant to use, like, say, Mako or Amico. Um, and I hadn't used it for a while, so I put on, like, three coats, and it really only needed two. But um, I absolutely love the glaze. <sighs> All right. So that's that. And I made another one of these plates that is more successful now. And this one was uh, with the vine roller from, was it MKM? Nah, whatever. Anyway, the pottery form, but you see the, the edge is more organic. And then I, I rolled it and actually rolled the other side as well here. So, and this is rainforest 
Thank you, Nat at Mud Magic. <laughs> it's new to me. I never bought it. She kept saying how much she loves it. Well, I bought it, and yeah, I love it. It's very nice. <laughs> okay. And here's a plate, 370. And I use the underglaze transfer, the owl, um, with ochre, Amico's ochre on it. I see I have a little bit of a bubble there. So, yeah, I might, I might put it back in. I'm not quite sure what to do about that. So my thing was is that I wanted to do this cone six because um, I like drips, you know, I like I, I like I like a lot of uh, of my glazes to be at cone six. But when you do a cone straight cone six, then you're using a celadon, you can get pinholes. But um, so what I did was in this kiln, I chose all 370 pieces, so no grog. Um, and mostly um, not celadons. So th that was that one had been sitting here on my shelf forever and ever. I thought I was just going to throw it in. But most of these are not celadons. So the next uh, kiln that I'll do would be a slow cool, which would have 370 with celadons or anything in my grog clay for bloating and pinholes. That's going to be my strategy now. All right, so this has a little whatever. This is alabaster, Mako's alabaster, just straight alabaster. It's a lovely glaze. I have um, quite a few people that just want pieces just in alabaster. Okay, so now I have a couple of cups here and <clears throat> so what they are is inside white opal by Mako top is white opal then at the bottom is Mako's sea salt and I leave a gap here and that's where I put Mako's copper float and then I just take a little bottle and do some squeegies just outside that that line. And um, this one's a crowd pleaser. Every time I put this out on the table, it's gone. And here's another one. Oh, look at that. There's some kind of purple in here. What the heck happened there? Uh, can you see it? <laughs> it's just a little gift. Yeah, people love this combo. I think it's because of the drama of the, the copper float. And I have to show you, like, pay attention, right? Can you see it? That's what happens, copper float at cone six. And you have to get it to cone six, otherwise it won't do that. This is why I was having such a fit. Okay. So now, ooh, let me get my notes because I did bring my notes this time and I wanted to, oh shoot, I did forget my plate though. Oh, I think I have to go get my plate. Okay, let me do these two first. Uh, this one is, I did rainforest and then wiped it back so that these monstera leaves would show better. And then three coats of Mako's Emerald. And then um, two of uh, Aurora here. And did I do anything else there? I think I did. Yeah, I did. I No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I did. I just didn't write it down. There was one, one small band of light flux. That's why it's doing that. Okay. Emerald, Aurora, and light flux. Okay. And then I did this combination again. 
because in my last kiln mode I liked how it turned out although it turned out a lot different in the last one and that's because it went to cone 7 last time or close to it okay so this is it so on the bottom is purple crystal Amico's purple crystal and then I have one times honey flux two times Mako's Lavender Mist, and then up to here, two times Purple Crystal again. And that's what you get. It's very pretty. I'm not so crazy about seeing the Lavender Mist thing right here. Should have brought it down a little further, but I mean, that's so picky. It's a beautiful mug. Yeah. So, yeah, there's that purple crystal. It is matte, so. And this time it does have more purple in it. Last time it just like cobalt blue. But I'm still looking for a great purple. Okay. I'll be back. I'm going to go get that tester plate. Okay, I'm back. So, I have these little dishes. Let's go with the big one first. This has um, rainforest... In, in the dragonfly which I carved that stamp and then white back and then the outside is fog and the same is on the little weenie tree of life one and then I have crow ones done the same way and this tree of life one I didn't do the rainforest so you can see the difference let's see here Okay, so rainforest, then white jack back, and this one, no rainforest, white back. There you go. And then this combination here is flux blossom times three and peppered plum times two. And this one is honey flux times three and peppered plum times two so you can see the difference right the flux blossom one this one the peppered plum is a lot more pink or it's pinkier and this one not so much um this is about the only peppered plum thing so far that i've combination or whatever that I've liked. I Pepper Plum is not my favorite, but uh, I don't mind these. I think they look okay. Okay. So here's my uh, cone pack. I ran out of cone fives, but I don't need it. This is six. Yay. This is seven. So it's uh, a little a hotter cone six. Beautiful. That's what I want. Yay, I am a happy potter now, let me tell you. Okay, let's so get this shelf out. All right, and I have one more of these, um, see these uh, mugs. It's nice and thin, I was happy with myself. Through them nice and thin. I don't know. I like thin. Okay, now what am I going to start with? Let me get my notes. This one's right on top. So. Oh, oh, oh la la. <laughs> nice. Look at that. Nice. Okay. So, on the bottom, I put three times Mako's wrought iron. <clears throat> and then, I did Celadon Bloom all over. No, sorry. Turquoise, which is the base of Celadon Blue, all over once. And then I did Celadon Bloom, just like not on the badge two more times over the whole thing. So that's why this happened with the wrought iron. 
and I just left this, the turquoise. Look at that. Hoo wee. Look at that, Nat. Wow. Oh, I'm happy with that. Nice. This is a stamp. I got it off of, I think, Temu. Like, just a stamp for scrapbooking. And um, on that sheet, there's all sorts of cool flowers on there. So, yep, that's a winner. Okay. Then, picture number one, uh, this one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So, as I usually do, two times honey flux and then one times river birch. And then I have three times amaryllis and three times albany slip brown. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love it. Nice. So beautiful. All right, and then <laughs> I have a ball mug I put down. So I recently actually just put up a, a throwing demonstration to make the bulbous mugs. So this is one except done in 370. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. It is rose quartz times three. And then uh, flux blossom times three. And then amaryllis times three. Oh, man, it's so beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's perfect. Did I mention I'm a happy potter today? Wow. Okay, I'm just going to pause you because I need more room on my shelf. Okay, I'm back. Next. Well, next I have a refire, and that was this um, two vase that I had fired before, and it had crawled a little bit. And you saw me make these on the um, things to th pretty things to make or beautiful things to make with extruded tubes, clay tubes. And I have a part two coming because. Um, there's other things you can make with extruded tubes. Go figure. Anyway, this is always a crowd pleaser. Like, I always have to make sure I have these in stock. All right. And this bowl, you're going to laugh at this one. Oh, it's down there. I made this beautiful bowl. And um, it cracked the side. <laughs> Because what did I do? I picked it up by the side, just like you're not supposed to do. And you know, it's so thin, guess what happened? It broke. <laughs> I know you're surprised. But, you know, like we get creative, don't we? So, inside is Mako's Peacock. Outside is Mako's Dunes, three times. And then Mako's Shipwreck three times and peacock is the base of shipwreck and then I put light flux light flux and light flux and I've done this combo before and I just love it it's very different but I love it and I actually call it shipwreck because it just looks like that okay so this is my deal and I will show you later because I'm not going to wait till I get it done and post it on the end of this video but I bought this little pieces of hardware that are like the rivets on your boots. <sighs> Maybe I'll put a picture in here. That's what I'll do. And I'm going to epoxy them on here and then lace leather. I love the bowl. 
and I love the glaze. But you know, it would have been a really nice bowl. Okay, so now let me, we've got some more testers, speedball testers. So, this one by Speedball is Ethereal Blue. And on the bottom, we have buttermilk. They pretty much stayed where I put them. So I'm thinking don't expect them to run unless you want to put something underneath. And then another one, Speedball, is um, this one, which is teal agate. It's very beautiful. And on the bottom side is blackened copper. So they're beautiful. And I, like I put the inside color a little bit on the outside just to see what would happen, but nothing dramatic there happened. Um, and same here, if you recall, this band is over the this bottom glaze, but it's nothing too dramatic. So it pretty much stays where you put it, it seems. And then my last little speedball tester is this one. And that would be here, wisteria. And then the bottom is gossamer drift, pretty much a white. And again, the wisteria is on the white here, didn't move. So they're beautiful, but they definitely act differently than, uh, than the Amico or the Mako. Um, I don't think I don't think that I'll be buying too much of them. I do like that uh, first one though, um, the tourmaline. I do like that. Okay, two more pieces. Thanks for hanging in. Now this one, this picture, you've seen this combo for me before, and this is yeah, two honey flux, one river birch, and then a big band of obsidian. And then Albany slip band here and an Albany slip brown band here. It's very pretty. It's very dramatic. There you go. Okay, and one more. Uh, here. This one came about from my summer peach tester that I did last time and so I thought well I'll do a mug like that so here it is the bottom is cactus times three and then I did three times flux blossom and then I did summer peach by coyote three times and then cactus a, a band of cactus two times and uh, it turned out really nice and summery yep looks good it's very yeah I like it so there you go okay so there you have it um, I'm way happier with the straight cone six um, and yeah it's a good thing so like and subscribe if you found it useful uh, and share if you think you have friends that would like to see the same thing um, I truly appreciate it and by all means leave your comment I love to have a dialogue with you about um, art in general <laughs> not just pottery 
So, uh, yeah, and I'll leave any links below that, uh, that you need. And yeah, that's about it. So happy creating and peace out. <laughs>